Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. So today we are going to be going through part two of the chemistry of life. So last video we chatted about the elements and how they form different ionic bonds, covalent bonds, hydrogen bonds, and so forth. Now we got to start building the macromolecules of life. So that's what we're going to get into in part two. All right, let's hop into it now. So the first part to discussing this is that we have to go over anabolism and catabolism. So this is the making and breaking, or the making and breaking of all the bonds that we need to build in life. So what the basis of all this is that we are taking monomers, which are single units, and we are forming polymers, or many units. Or we can take these polymers and turn them back into monomers. So we're constantly going through this building and breaking process in our body depending on our needs. So anabolism then is the making, so building larger molecules, so making polymers. And catabolism then is the breaking of these molecules. Each of these have two unique reactions. So I, and they both require or release water. The making of bonds is called a hydrolysis reaction or dehydration reaction. So we're making, and this is dehydration. This means water is released in the process, whereas catabolism is breaking, and this is called a hydrolysis reaction. So hydrolysis, which literally means water splitting. So this one requires water. So here, remember when we talked about the importance of water and chemical reactions? These are those two key chemical reactions. So if I were to just draw an example of um, anabolism here and making a chemical bond, this would be monomer one and with a hydroxyl group sticking off, and this would be monomer two with a hydroxyl group sticking off. So one, two. Now there are different enzymes depending on um, what this, these monomers are, but in this case, we're just drawing the generic one. So when we go through this reaction here, again, water is being released. So this water comes from this hydroxyl group and this hydrogen. That means we form this bond now to that oxygen. So if we were to draw this one back out now, Boom. This would then be that bond. This bond has different names depending on what macromolecule it is. In carbohydrates, it's called a glycosidic bond. In lipids, it's called a peptide bond. In nucleic acids, it's called a phosphodiester bond. And in lipids, uh, well, in triglycerides, it's a little different there. there aren't, they're not true monomers form, forming polymers. They are called ester bonds there. Uh, so this bond name changes from uh, macromolecule to macromolecule. But now we want to break it and go backwards and separate it again. So this now, we have to have the input of water coming in. And then we can separate it back into the individual subunits again. So it gets the H2O, adds it back, and can lyse or break that bond. So again, this is anabolism, and this is Catabolism. Our body is constantly going through both kinds of reactions, um, constantly depending on our needs. So now we're going to go through the four major macromolecules. Uh, so we have carbohydrates, we have lipids, we have proteins, and we have nucleic acids. So hopefully some of this is just a review from um, Biology 1, if you have taken that. Um, if not, um, I will eventually have some other videos going into more details on this, but I don't have them right now. Uh, but just general overview of carbohydrates here, uh, we have different monosaccharides. So monosaccharides are one sugar. So we have things like glucose, fructose, galactose, and these are called hexoses. So six member rings or six carbons. So if we can number these carbons here, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. And then there's an oxygen right there at that corner. Um, so that's why they're called hexoses, whereas down here now, this is just showing an example of some pentoses. These two pentoses, ribose and deoxyribose, are found in our nucleic acid. So DNA is made up of this deoxyribose. RNA is made up of ribose. The only difference is here is a hydrogen and here is a hydroxyl. So ribose has a hydroxyl group. Deoxyribose is lacking that hydroxyl group right there. It's the only difference. And uh, so this Pentoses have one, two, three, four, five.
carbons. So pentose is five carbons, hexose is six carbons. Uh, there are many other monosaccharides that exist. This is just naming a few that are important in biology. And now we can move into larger ones or forming a disaccharide. So this is the same reaction we just discussed earlier. So we are building, so this is an anabolic pathway. We have these two hydroxyl groups, the oxygen stays, we remove water, so there's one hydrogen, there's the other, and there's that oxygen, remove water from this reaction, and we form this bond between these two. Uh, and this is, again, is called a glycosidic bond. And here, if we combine a glucose monomer and a fructose monomer, we form table sugar or sucrose. Now, when we eat this, our body then has to digest that bond so that we can absorb the individual subunits. We can't absorb uh, disaccharides. Uh, we have to break all these molecules down for absorption during digestion. So if we're looking at uh, larger ones, so starch and glycogen are examples of polysaccharides. So many units. So a starch molecule has tons and tons of glucose monomers attached to it, can be branched uh, depending on the extent. And so starch is what we get when we eat. We break it all down, goes into our blood, and then gets sent to our liver for storage in the form of glycogen. So glycogen and starch are very similar, just one's in our body and one, is, one isn't. To break the, the, both these down, we use an enzyme called amylase. So then as this breaks down, um, we can have different disaccharides, uh, maltose, sucrose, lactose. So people who are lactose intolerant lack this enzyme right here called lactase. Um, so they stop producing it and they can't break lactose down into the individual subunits, which are uh, one glucose and one galactose. So the inability to break that down is due to not producing lactase. Uh, breaking down sucrose, we have an enzyme called sucrase. Breaking down maltose, we have an enzyme called maltase. So someone could easily lack one of these enzymes and not be able to break down various disaccharides. Now, one confusing thing I want to say about this figure, um, according to these arrows here, it makes you think that starch and glycogen are made of maltose, sucrose, and lactose. That's not exactly true. I like this figure just because it showed the breakdown of disaccharides with the enzymes. Um, in reality, starch and glycogen are all glucose monomers that we then break down. Um, so just keep that in mind. And then here, are showing some various monosaccharides. Now, we move on to the next group, lipids. And you'll see after each of these, I have the atoms that are typically represented in each. So carbohydrates have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Lipids have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Proteins then add nitrogen, and then nucleic acids then add phosphorus. So you see cho, cho, chon, chomp. But instead of an M in chomp, it's an N for the nitrogen. All right, lipids now, these are our fats. We have four major classes of lipids. The first one here is a triglyceride. A triglyceride has a glycerol head, three fatty acids. So a fatty acid is a hydrocarbon chain. Uh, there could be double bonds in here. Uh, so they could be saturated or unsaturated fatty acids. And then there's a carboxylic acid end. So here's the H2O that's removed in this reaction. And then we form this bond right here, which is called an ester bond. Uh, forming three of these bonds with a glycerol backbone here makes a triglyceride. And so three reactions, three waters are removed, and this is our triglyceride. triglyceride. So this is how we store fat in our body. Another type of fat then is called a phospholipid. Very, very similar to a triglyceride. Right here we have that glycerol backbone again. Here we attach two fatty acids. However, on this bottom carbon, there should be a bond right there, on this bottom carbon on this glycerol, instead of adding another fatty acid right here, we added a very electronegative head or a polar head right here. So right here we have a phosphate group and, this is a, and then a nitrogen group over here. So this is called phosphatidylcholine. Um, and this makes th this end very polar and this end very nonpolar. And phospholipids are essential in our cell membranes. It's why our cells stay as cells. If we didn't have this amphipathic um, structure to this, or this nonpolar and polar regions, our cell membranes would not be able to self-assemble. So if I were to draw the phospholipid bilayer, we have the tails here, draw the phospholipid heads. It's not exact, but here we'd have water on the outside because that's where it's polar and no water on the inside of the cell membrane where it's nonpolar. 
So this is just general representation. And, and again, you can change the number of single and double bonds here, and that actually changes the fluidity of the membrane. The next group are our sterols. These are very, very important in anatomy and physiology because these make our steroids, or they're the backbone of our steroids, our hormones, so testosterone, um, estradiol, and so forth. And they're all synthesized from this molecule, cholesterol. So sterols are, you know, you can easily see them because they have one, two, three, four carbon chains in their backbone. All the differences between the sterols are these functional groups that are coming off. Um, so every single one of the steroid hormones and so forth just vary in the functional groups that come off of this four-fused carbon member ring. Um, so we'll come across these a lot, especially uh, once we get to the endocrine system. And then the last one here are the uh, prostaglandins, or sometimes you see these referred to as icosanoids, and pretty much um, they kind of look like a fatty acid. So there's that carboxylic acid group in a hydrocarbon chain. However, now they have different functional groups coming off of it, where a fatty acid doesn't have those functional groups that come off of it. They can form different shapes, and we might come across these as we go through various lectures as well. All right, next group are the proteins. So proteins, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. These are made of individual subunits called amino acids. When amino acids chain together, we form a polypeptide. Um, so forming two amino acids together, that would be a dipeptide. That bond between them is called a peptide bond. So here with these, let's just diagram one out real fast for a basic structure of amino acid. We have a central carbon. We have a carboxylic acid group right here. Uh, hydrogen coming off this alpha carbon. Up here is an R group. That means, so we have 20 different amino acids. This R group just represents all 20 it could be and then we have an, an amine group right here so it's a nitrogen two hydrogens now if we draw another one right here we can diagram this peptide bond out so let's draw this amine group again we'll just do an r group here uh, just to keep it simple or we can make it glycine which is a hydrogen so now this peptide bond again it's a dehydration reaction so water is going to be removed in this bond and it actually it steals it from right there and steals that hydrogen that's where water is removed. We go through this bond, and then we can draw it out. So there is the double bond oxygen. This bond comes over to that nitrogen. We have a hydrogen coming off of it now. And then we go to the rest of that amino acid. This is the C terminal end then. And then we can draw the rest over here if we want to. R group, hydrogen, and the amine group. So then this bond right here is then that peptide bond. There's this structural representation of forming a dipeptide. And again, we have a whole bunch of, some of our amino acids are called uh, essential amino acids. We have nine that we, our body doesn't make, so we have to get them in our diet. Um, and so they're very important in growing all the different protein structures in our body. So that's when we then make a polypeptide. And one thing with proteins is we go through this folding process um, and going through different levels of folding because a protein isn't active until it's in its folded final state and sometimes it needs other subunits with it. So here are the different states of protein folding. We have primary, secondary, tertiary, and then quaternary down here. So the primary structure is like reading alphabet, um, listing every individual amino acid, no folding going on at all. Secondary structure is where we form what are called beta, uh, beta pleated sheets and then the alpha helix. So proteins have these twisting structures. If we look at this next one down here, um, there would be the beta pleated sheet and there would be the alpha helix. So this is when the, um, the oxygens, the nitrogens, and the, ox and the hydroxyl groups sometimes interact with each other. Um, or even the, some amino acids like a proline uh, actually binds back and forms a ring structure. And this is where we get the bonds in the alpha helix. So secondary, no R group interactions so that's you know what the amino acid could be tertiary then is then defined by when r groups interact so r groups could be positive they could be negative they could be hydrophobic hydrophilic they could form disulfide bonds and this is when we, now that protein continues to fold and makes that final structure um, now that doesn't mean that protein is active and ready some proteins work just fine with just one peptide one polypeptide but however most proteins, let's look at hemoglobin, for example, is made up of four subunits. Those four subunits have to come together properly for an active 
protein, an active functioning protein. Um, if one subunit is made wrong, it might not work correctly. And we see something like that in a disease like sickle cell anemia. Two of the subunits are folded incorrectly. Um, so this is an example of showing three different subunits coming together. So this could be a transmembrane protein. In the center here is where the ion comes in and out of the cell. Um, but it doesn't work unless all these individual monomers, so all folded properly, then come together and bind. And this is called the quaternary structure. And this is the final active protein form. Not all proteins are active in this tertiary structure. They require the other subunits. So that's proteins. We have one more left to go here. These are our nucleic acids, our RNA and our DNA. Uh, so we have our individual bases here, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine in our DNA. Um, here is that deoxyribose sugar. Uh, remember the only difference here, if this was RNA, I'll show that coming up, we have a hydroxyl group coming off that sugar. So here, this would just be a hydrogen. Uh, remember DNA, uh, A binds with T, uh, C binds with G, forming um, complementary base pairing, and the strands run anti-parallel to each other. So if this is three prime to five prime, this one is five prime to three prime, and it's named by the carbon number. So this would be the three prime carbon, and this one up here would be the five prime carbon. And that's where it gets that naming structure. Um, remember, DNA can be double-stranded. RNA cannot be. And then RNA doesn't have thymine. We replace thymine with uracil. So now let's look at RNA. Oh, also, just this definition of a nucleotide. A nucleotide is defined as this right here. So we have a sugar. We have a phosphate, and we have a nitrogenous base, and right here it's showing guanine. So this is an RNA nucleotide if we're ignoring the rest up there, just showing how this phosphodiester bond here forms to that next sugar. So this phosphate tailbone here and sugars, and then the base stick towards the middle where they can hydro hydrogen bond with the other side. So then this is ribose, and we have the hydroxyl group right there, and this is then showing it bound to a phosphate group. Uh, ribose alone would have a hydroxyl group right there, but this bind, binding um, removes that hydrogen when forming that phosphodiester bond. Uh, remember, RNA, we have uracil. It's single-stranded and also um, has this ribose sugar and not deoxyribose. And then finally, we can look at the structure of ATP. ATP is our energy currency. If we look at this, ATP um, has a ribose sugar. This is an adenine base, so a nitrogenous base, and then one, two, three phosphate groups. So ATP is adenosine triphosphate. If we were to just look at two, that'd be ADP, adenosine diphosphate, or if it just had one phosphate, it'd be called AMP, or adenosine monophosphate. Adenosine monophosphate, it's just pretty much the same thing as an A nucleotide in RNA. So we have a sugar, a phosphate, and a base. So a lot of people don't realize that ATP is very, very identical to an A base in um, RNA. So that is the little quick and dirty summary of the macromolecules of life. Hopefully you got a good uh, take home message from all this and it cleared up some things. So we talked about proteins, we talked about lipids, uh, the nucleic acids, and then we started with carbohydrates and how these bonds are made and broken. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Hello again. Thank you. Thank you for watching my video. I'm glad you could come by. If you enjoyed this content, feel free to do that thing where you like and subscribe. Um, also, if you're interested, I prepare and record all of these videos live on Twitch. After the recordings, we do a post recording question and answer section. And then sometimes I play games where any question is fair game as I game. Also, on Twitch, I'm a co-founder of a wonderful community called the Knowledge Fellowship, or TKF. Our goal is to seek and share knowledge with others while live streaming. We feature streamers who cover biology, law, physics, chemistry, geology, photography, health and fitness, psychology and mental health, rocket science and aeronautics, programming, and tons of different practical EDU streams. Feel free to check out TKF at the link in the description and join the very active Discord community. Hopefully, you find something that interests you. With that, I'll see you all next time and have a wonderful day. Remember to seek knowledge and challenge everything.